This is Stockholm. I'm sitting on the on the side of the sea here. Of course, in Stockholm, the sea comes really inland, and lots of people live on the sea. This is river, actually, that goes into the sea. We have been visiting the uh, cancer registry here to see if we can get some data to look into the effects of uh, the cesium-137 in, in the water on the people who live close to the sea. But you will recall recently I was talking to you about the foundation, Christopher Busby Foundation for the Children of Fukushima. Now the Japanese government have been spending a lot of time measuring cesium-137 using whole body monitors, whole body counters in the children. About 3,500 people have been um, scanned so far. And these, this will be a database for the concentration of cesium-137 in their, in their bodies. And the reason I believe that this is happening is that they are covering their back against any later court cases. Because when these people eventually develop diseases like cancer and leukemia, they will want to take TEPCO to court, or they will want to take the Japanese government to court. And then, in order to do that, of course, they'll have to have evidence that there was a problem. And I talked to you yesterday about the evidence being um, covered up, because, of course, the, the cesium-137 is now being trucked all over Japan, so there'll be no proper control group. But the other problem, of course, is this, that they will be able to come into court with this whole body monitoring data and say, look, the levels of cesium, the levels of radioactivity were really low. It couldn't possibly cause these levels of cancer. And they will use this data in court. And that's what I believe they're collecting the data for. So it's most important that we get independent data, that somebody goes in there and gets data which will possibly be used in court later to back up the assertion that there is a problem. One of the problems, of course, is that the whole body monitoring only measures gamma radiation from cesium. So you don't see the plutonium, the uranium, the tritium, the strontium-90, the barium-140, the carbon-14, all of the other stuff which are beta emitters which don't register on these systems. But of course you can detect by doing urine tests and tests for hair, which we will be offering as part of the Foundation Laboratory work. So that's my message. Uh, is uh, today is to is to consider very much taking some samples like hair samples, cutting them, putting them in a plastic bag, and just keeping them in the fridge, because if it turns out there's a problem later on and you want to go into court, you won't have any evidence that there was a problem. Let it be mark it up. with a date. Yes, that's right. Plastic Ziploc bag with a lock of hair in there, as much hair as you can afford to put in there. Write the date on it, seal it up, put your name and your location. Work has begun in Miyagi Prefecture to examine debris left behind by the March 11 disaster and test for radioactive substances released by the nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Testing began on a Saturday at a temporary storage site in Ishinomaki City. Here, the quake and tsunami left behind more than 6 million tons of debris, the largest amount among all municipalities hit by the disaster. Using heavy machinery, workers removed samples of wood and rubber from a huge pile of debris. Storage sites across the prefecture are getting close to capacity. If safe levels of radioactivity are confirmed, local officials hope to move debris to new disposal sites being built in Miyagi Prefecture and also to incineration facilities located in neighboring regions. The testing is aimed at dispelling public safety concerns about the transfer and disposal of debris.
Measuring radiation levels is essential for easing public concerns about radioactive contamination. Miyagi Prefecture plans to measure the radioactivity of debris at 12 storage sites, including those in Kesen Numa and Minami Sandiku. Municipalities in Fukushima Prefecture affected by the March 11th disaster are stepping up efforts to restore life to normal. They've begun to decontaminate public buildings and are restoring key infrastructures. The move comes after the Japanese government lifted an evacuation advisory on Friday for five municipalities. The municipalities are located between 20 and 30 kilometers from the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. After the disaster, residents in the municipalities were advised to prepare to evacuate in case of an emergency at the nuclear plant. About 28,500 residents, or half of the population, fled the areas. The city of Minamisoma has placed priority on removing radioactive substances from public facilities such as parks and schools. Contractors are replacing surface soil with uncontaminated soil, but they say it's becoming difficult to procure the necessary amount of the soil due to increasing demand. Cleaning the parks and the roads is only part of what needs to be done. There are still many, many concerns. In Kawauchi village, residents have begun to patrol residential areas against burglaries. It is feared that the cancellation of the government advisory could make it easier for burglars to prey on communities. I want to do something to help. I work hard for my village and the younger generation. The central government has yet to come up with concrete measures, including financial assistance, to support the municipality's restoration efforts. European Union nations that operate nuclear power plants say they found no major problems with their reactors during safety checks mandated by the EU. They conducted so-called nuclear stress tests following the nuclear accident at Fukushima Daiichi. The EU carried out assessments on 143 reactors in 14 member states. The reactors were examined to see if they could withstand the effects of major natural disasters, such as an earthquake, tsunami and flooding. In phase one, individual, individual plant operators in each country evaluated the safety of their facilities. Then governments compiled the results and submitted reports to the EU by the deadline on Saturday. France says the chance of a major quake and tsunami is almost zero. The country has 58 reactors that generate 80 percent of its energy consumption. French officials say that safety is secure at all 58 reactors and that no additional measures are required. Germany, which has decided to shut down all its nuclear facilities by 2022, says safety at its reactors remains high. Nuclear reactors in each country will assess the safety of the reactors, which will be then verified by a team of experts and authorities from surrounding nations. A final report will be issued before EU leaders meet in June next year. Anti-nuclear rallies have been staged across the United States amid growing concerns about the safety of the nation's more than 100 nuclear reactors. Demonstrations held on Saturday at 15 locations in the U.S. were largely inspired by the accident at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in March. A recent tornado and an earthquake also shut down over a dozen reactors on the East Coast, making Americans increasingly worried about the safety of the 104 nuclear reactors in the country. In New York, people gathered at a park along the Hudson River to participate in a rally organized by a civic group. The group is demanding the shutdown of the 40-year-old Indian Point nuclear reactors in New York State. Roughly 20 million people live within 80 kilometers of the facility, which is located close to two earthquake fault lines. A Japanese woman living in New York described the situation mothers in Fukushima are facing. Should my kids wear masks? Should I let them play outdoor? These are the questions everybody, every mother is asking themselves on a daily basis. 
This is a, a national, but it's an international tragedy. It has heightened my awareness, and I know if it can happen in Japan, it can happen anywhere.